to your name. There's no God like you, Lord, no God, hallelujah, who can proclaim your name, Lord. For you are the most high God, worthy of the most highest praise, Lord. And you're good always, Lord. We just thank you, Lord. We thank you for your presence, Father. We thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for making us overcomers, Lord and conquerors, even more than conquerors, through Christ Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for giving us access into your presence. We thank you, Lord, that there is no longer a wall of separation between us because the blood of Jesus was shed for the remission of our sins. Father, we pray this evening, hallelujah, that you give us receptive mind and listening hearts as we now turn to pay attention to your word, give us understanding, give us knowledge. You said in your word that you created us so that we would understand you and so that we would know you. Bring us deeper into this relationship, Lord. Cause our eyes to see what you see and our ears to hear what you hear and our hearts and lives to function as you function. We bless your holy name in Jesus' mighty name. Come on and put your hands together. Give the Lord some praise. Hallelujah. Thank you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. to another evening, Family Worship, Breaking the Chain School of Ministry. I pray that all is well with you, the viewer, as is all is well with me in my house. I pray that you set your heart to hear what thus saith the Lord tonight, because faith cometh by hearing, and by hearing by the word of God. Where there is no word of God preached, there is no faith of God given, therefore no faith of God to be received, therefore no faith of God to, to, to walk out towards God in this life. Tonight we're going to continue with the title, Strongholds Must Fall. Before we get into it, I would like to say to you that uh, strongholds in the mind, you know, it's been on my mind. How do they even get to be? What are strongholds? How do they exist? How can they fall? Can I do it? Does God do it? Um, do I build them up? Does the devil build them up? I began to ask questions because when you ask the Father questions and you read the Word, He'll answer you. Sometimes he'll answer you directly, spirit to spirit, and sometimes he'll answer you just simply by you reading. You'll run across the answer. And um, I wanted to slow down a little bit, even if it means I have to read certain scriptures over and over. That's okay. Why? As long as faith is coming, um, we're good. Um, the mind, the battlefield of the mind and the heart, the place where we are told to guard, by God, told us to guard our hearts. For out of the heart, not just guard it, but guard it with all diligence. For out of the heart come all the issues of life. And um, one of the definitions I have for you this evening of what a stronghold is, and I'm not saying that I have the total concrete definition uh, but I have a good one. What is a stronghold? A stronghold is a lie that Satan has established in our thinking. It's like a wall. The more the lie is believed, the thicker the wall. The more the lie is believed, the thicker the wall. I repeat, a stronghold, and this is just one way to define it, 
but this way is simple for me to teach it, is a lie of the adversary received by you, believed by you, therefore enforced by you and him. There is agreement with you in the lie when you receive it. And wherever there is agreement, there is some form of strength. And so, it is possible that a stronghold can grow in its strength, in its nature. What, why are strongholds used? Strongholds are used to keep something in, or someone in, or someone out, or someone, you know, so you can't move forward in this case, to do the things of God with ease, with simplicity. I'm going to read to you tonight the first scripture. And by the way, as I teach, I'll say some experiences that I have learned and some I'm learning and just learned the other day because um, in most cases when I'm preaching, if God is not directly sending me out to preach to a specific people, I'm included in the learning. I'm included in the lesson for what preacher is above the receiving of God's word. I don't know, mm -hmm. but it ain't me. Mm -hmm. And I don't ever want it to be me. So I say, keep me, Lord. And I'll just say, I am dependent upon the Lord to be humble. I'm dependent upon the Lord to preach his gospel. I'm dependent upon the Lord. Therefore, I need his word. If a man's heart and mind are filled always with evil thoughts, lust of the flesh, carnal desires, wicked desires, wicked imaginations, he will be evil. If the heart of the man or the woman, if the heart of that man or woman and the mind of that man or woman are continually filled with fear, negative negativity, negative thoughts on his own abilities, he will be weak and fearful and cowardly and easily defeated. One of the things that it's always been a battle since I was a child in my life is I could wake up in the morning and already my mind would be filled with defeated thoughts. Already seemed like growing up, as soon as I opened my eyes in the morning, I was in a battle. Nobody in front of me physically, nobody around me physically, not even put my foot off the bed yet, and already thoughts of defeat, negative thoughts, thoughts of fear, thoughts of insecurity were already present with me. And I'm telling you, if it wasn't for the word of God, I wouldn't be even able to say this to you because I wouldn't know what it was. I'm telling you right now, that's a demon. No, God did not design for any man or woman to wake up in the morning when being designed to give him praise and honor and glory. We were not designed to wake up with evil thoughts and evil passions. We were not designed to wake up with fear and unbelief. We were not designed to wake up afraid to move forward in life, to prosper in life. Mm -hmm. And so that, that caused me, a direct connection with the Holy Ghost caused me to ask the Lord a question. What is it? Why is it? Why me? Satan has demons assigned to people, especially Christians. Why? His goal is to knock us down in every area where he can. He's not going to stop doing that until the Father lock him up for good. He is allowed. He is allowed. Not so much by God. 
but by man who allows him to reign over their life. So, where does these negative thoughts, these negative feelings, these fearful thoughts, these, these lustful thoughts, these angry thoughts, where do they come from? These thoughts of murder and thoughts of rape and thoughts of jealousy and thoughts of envy. I'm, I'm telling you I'm dealing with this the way I'm supposed to deal with it. These things exist because demons exist. Strongholds are lies of Satan built up in the mind, received by the man or the woman, built up in the mind because they believe in it. Where there is no faith in a thing, that thing has no strength over you. Where there is no, 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 no faith in God, there is no operating in the things of God. And so if you believe the lie of the adversary, the stronghold will be built. We're dealing with strongholds must fall. So I'll say to you, strongholds fall when we obey the word of God. Strongholds fall when you put your mind to know the word of God. You can just be reading and entertaining yourself with positive words. Not just positive, but supernatural words of God. And faith will come. For faith cometh by hearing and by hearing by the word of God. You can read the word and believe in your heart what you read and strongholds will fall. One of the main ways to break a stronghold is to believe God's word. Why? A word was believed to build it. So there's a word that needs to be believed in order for it to fall. How simple is that? I really, really needed to say something so simple that it could, if at all, not even be refused. If a stronghold is built by receiving a word that is a lie, a stronghold also falls by receiving the truth. The Bible says that the word of God is a crushing hammer. Every time you read the word of God and believe it, you can't stop there. You have to verbalize it. And faith has to be the motive, the foundation of your verbalization, of your declaration of faith. Without faith, no stronghold will ever fall. The lie of the enemy will be real to you. You will have no strength to refuse it if you have no strength of the Lord. And the strength of the Lord is his word on the inside. It's God's word that makes strongholds fall. But you can't stop there. It's us Bringing that word of God that we receive and believe out of our inner man, through our soulish man, the mind, and then the body. The word of God must be verbalized. Where there is no declaration of faith, there is no breaking of the breach. Where there is no hammer put to the nail. There will be no fastening of the house. The house will fall without a wind. Because to build material on top of material, just the weight of it all, without it being fastened down, just the sure weight of it all will cause it to fall. And every house has weight. And so if you want to remove the stronghold, which is, I'm teaching it as a believed and received lie, then you have to denounce from the lie, rebuke, 
the devourer of the lie, receive God's word, and then verbalize God's word. Use God's word as it is a living sword of the spirit. For instance, I shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. I shall live and not die and declare the glory of the Lord. What, 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 what happens when I say that? I took the word of God that I received, that I believed. I took the word of God that God himself said to me. I received it into my being, into my mind. Even my emotions are disciplined by it. What do I mean by that? I'm not afraid to die. The Bible says every man will die once and then the judgment. But Satan, because of the sword, the believed sword being spoken out of my mouth will not be able to kill me before it's my time. He will not be able to take me out on his terms. That's powerful. So, if I believe that word and receive that word, how can he lie to me and tell me he's going to kill me? God's word becomes a stronghold to keep the enemy out. So strongholds can be negative or strongholds can be positive. Which word do you believe is the question? Do you believe the word of the Lord or you believe the word of the adversary? For where there is the word of the Lord, there is life and liberty. And where there is the word of the enemy, there is bondage and prison. And no breaking of the chains. But when the word of the Lord is received, the breaking of the chains is without a doubt going to happen. It's going to happen. Look at Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4. I love God. I love what God does with you. Well, I love what God does with me when I spend time with him. I love this calm man I become. I love this smiling man I become. I'm telling you, I grew up with a defeated face almost all my life. I entered into Christianity with that face. Always looking angry. Always looking mean. Always frowning. Even if I didn't feel so in my heart, that was the expression of my face. Frustration and anger. And I wanted to know why. And the Lord said, that's not you. I'm looking at your heart right now. That's not how you feel in your heart, but that's the face expression you have. He said, that's a demon. Release yourself. I had to learn the word. The more learn I, the more word I learned, the more the stronghold fell until it was depleted. The hammer of the Lord is not a physical thing that eventually will be destroyed itself. The word of the Lord is a crushing hammer. His word will never be defeated. He said in his word, all things, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word will not pass away. That means he, he cannot be defeated. That means his word never leaves his mouth and returns unto him void and empty, but every word fulfilled. Now, if God's word, and it is, comes out of his mouth, and every word is fulfilled, it will be and is the same thing to you when you speak it. When you believe the word of God, you speak the word of God, you can guarantee, not on your word only, but on God's word, it does not return back to him for it. And Satan is terrified of God's word. I'll go out on the limb as to say that is the only thing that he is terrified about. 
He's not afraid of anything about you except your legal right, your God-given birthright to receive the word and speak the word. When you speak the word of God, the word of God is a sword. And when you speak the word of God, it does this to the enemy. It sticks him, it cuts him. He can, that is the only thing he can't handle. It is the only thing that makes a stronghold break. Being fearful all the time. I'm not talking about if somebody walk up on you and they go boo and you jump, startled you. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about being fearful all the time. That's a demon of fear living with you. You scared to train the children. You scared to let the child walk. You scared. You scared to uh, uh, go to the supermarket by yourself. You scared to go to the bank. You scared of this. You scared of that. You scared of the dark. You scared to walk through your own house with the lights off. Your house, where you're not afraid to pay the rent, but you're afraid to cross that floor in the dark, and then you say, "I'm a Christian." That's not normal. That's demonic in nature. There's a stronghold present keeping that person in fear. Why? Somewhere in that person's life, they receive the words of fear to fear. And because of it, the demonic force of fear has increased in strength. And we all know Jesus Christ told us in the word, he said, when an unclean spirit comes out of a man, that right there just tells us that an unclean spirit could be in a man and come out of a man. He said, they walked up about in dry places, seeking rest. They returned back to the man they came out of and they searched that man to find entrance again. I believe one of the things they're looking for is no stronghold of the Lord. Pay attention now. I believe one of the things that demon is looking for is an access point back into the place where the Bible says, Jesus said, <laughs> he said it this way. They say, I want back into my home. They call the man they were booted out of, cast out of their home. The place where they have set up shop. No woman, no man moves into a house or an apartment or a living place and does not seek to set up and rearrange that house or that living place according to their desire. When a demon comes into a man or a woman, they set up the mind and life of that man or woman according to their desire, not according to the man's desire. For what man truly desires to be in prison? Even the thief don't want to go to jail because jail is jail is jail in the spirit and in the physical. Look at Proverbs 4.23. says, keep thou... Let's go up a little bit. Because this is the way a stronghold falls, and this is the way a stronghold will not be rebuilt. Are you listening to me? This is a big answer for some of you viewers and some of you here attending this service. This is a big answer and if you would just pay attention, this is the key to your deliverance. The Bible says, God will make a way of escape. For with every temptation from the enemy, there is a way of escape. The Bible also says that Satan comes and tempts a man according to the desire in a man's heart. So now I'm going to shoot this at you. Strongholds are also built in a man's mind. 
when he chooses wrong. He said, he said, when the enemy comes to tempt you, he tempts you according to the desires of your own heart. I'm going to go out on the line again and say that demonic strongholds in a man or a woman's life are created by the choice of that man or that woman. If Satan and he is the tempter comes to tempt me according to the desires of my heart, if the desires in my heart are holy, are righteous and just, he gains no territory. So I'm saying the access for him to build a stronghold in you, it starts with your wrong choice. Strongholds live because of wrong choices. Look at verse 20, chapter 4, verse 20. My son, attend to my words, and climb thine ear unto my sayings. This is the way of escape out of the snare of the fowler. This is the way of deliverance from a stronghold. It will never change. This way will never change. You can count on God to never change his word. He won't change one letter, one dot. One, he won't change it. God is faithful. God is faithful. Look at the way. My son, attend to my words. Incline thy ear unto my saying. So the way from underneath a stronghold which carries much weight. The way from underneath a demonic stronghold is first attending to God's word, paying attention to God's word. When you get away from the word of God, there is no way you can stop a stronghold from being built because you can't stop the adversary from coming. It's God's word. He said, I am your shield and your buckler. He said, I am your strong tower. The righteous run into me and are safe. Who's he talking about? Not self-righteous man. He's talking about believers who have received the righteousness of Jesus Christ by faith. Without Christ's righteousness, there's no strongholds that will fall. But now we have Christians living with strongholds in their mind. For them, it was a choice. For the sinner, they were born in it. They were born on the dark side. I was born in the physical, on the dark side, until Christ redeemed me from the curse of the Lord. Now, if a stronghold is on my life, it's because I chose to believe the lie. Look at the way out. My son, attend to my words, incline thy ear unto my saying. Sons have a right to hear the word of God. Verse 21. Let them not depart from thy eyes. Look at how strongholds fall. They start with us taking responsibility to pay attention. Let not them depart from thy eyes. That's our responsibility. Every time you stop reading and studying your Bible, it is almost guaranteed that you will return back to your vomit. The Bible says a dog returns back to his vomit. What is he saying? Carnal returns to carnal. Flesh returns to flesh. The natural is always going to return back to the natural. But we are not natural. We have become the supernatural sons of God. The divine father sons. We have a divine and kingly nature. But when we refuse to live by that nature and constantly keep our minds uh, 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 afresh with what that nature is, every dog, I'm not calling nobody a dog, 
I'm repeating the word of God. A dog returns back to his vomit. I've seen it for myself. A dog will throw up and go back and lick it up if the master don't wipe it up fast enough. And in my mind, that's nasty. I've never threw up on the floor and went and got on my knees and licked it up. The very thought of it is nasty. The smell of alone make me nauseous. It's filth. Regurgitated. It's regurgitated up out of the body. It was never supposed to be put back in the body. And there are things Christ has cleansed us from by the reading, by the receiving and the reading of his word. And because when we put the word of God down and stay away from the word for any length of time, we become filthy again and we begin to lick up our own vomit, our own carnal ways, our own, that old carnal nature that we are not even supposed to be alive to anymore because the Bible says, reckon yourself to be dead alive, uh, to the flesh and alive unto righteousness. Strongholds exist in the mind for more than one reason. So to blame the enemy, I think that's a mistake. I think to take responsibility as a son of God. To guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it come the issues of life. I think that is a better way to deal with stronghold than, uh, like I'm not looking at you and I'm saying, oh, you got a demon. No, demons will come. And a lot of issues are because of demons. But there is a place that a demon cannot get into until he has been given permission. When you believe the adversary, you agree with the adversary. That's all the permission he needs. For a threefold cord, in the book of Proverbs, it says a threefold cord is not easily broken. That can go good on the supernatural spiritual side of God, or that can go bad on the enemy side. It can work for you, or it can work against you. You can be in a threefold cord with the Lord, or you could be in a threefold cord with the enemy. Let them not depart from your eyes, keep them in the midst of your heart. So it's not reading your word, keeping them in the midst of your heart. Uh, is you not paying attention to what God's saying, keeping them in the midst of your heart? Not coming to service, that's not keeping the word in the midst of your heart. There's a system of God that must be followed in order for, first of all, strongholds not even to be built. And if they are built, following God's system of doing things will knock them down. Why? Satan cannot handle the sword of the Spirit. He cannot handle the sword of the Spirit. One of his major moves is to get us out of his word so that he can build. He wants to be Bob the builder in your mind. Why? He'll build according to his heart and not according to the, to the Lord of Lord and King of Kings heart. And so that which we allow into our lives starts with a choice. God said, this is how you choose. Guard your heart with all diligence. How? Stay in my word. Let them not depart from you. Don't be fooled. There's not a television program or a man with a collar or a hat that can save you for not even a king can deliver himself from too many troubles. You ever notice all the bad guys in all the movies and in real life, they be so big and bad, doing so much harm to people. I pray, may God bless you if one of you are watching. And may you repent and change your life. You do so much harm to people. But then, when the harvest of trouble start coming to get you, 
You fall apart like a 99 cent watch. Total fear. Why? No king can deliver himself. Verse 22. Wait, first of all, let me go back to 21 because I want to make a very powerful statement. Let them not depart from thy eyes. So, how are you going to keep the word of God in your eyes? You're going to put the paper in your eyeball. You got to constantly read the scriptures. Not constantly hear the preacher. Constantly read your Bible. Keep them in the midst of the heart. Wait, there's a place in the heart for the word of God. When you read the word of God to obey it, there's a place in your heart that becomes filled with it. And when that place in your heart is filled with it, no stronghold will be built because there will be no believing of the lie. My definition tonight of strongholds, and there are a few more, is a lie given by Satan and received by you is a strong. The more the lie is believed, the thicker, the longer, the deeper, the more connected the stronghold becomes. How did I stop using drugs after using drugs since I was a teenager all the way into my adulthood? How did I get off the streets and stuff? The Lord told me, I was in an AA meeting, an NA meeting. The Lord told me, if you get up and raise your hand and declare the creed that you are Ira, a drug addict, you will never be free from drugs again. He said, leave the meeting right now. What was present? I was about to declare the decree according to the lie, which became a stronghold in my life, keeping me from seeing the truth of God, that I could walk in the liberty of Christ and not even ever touch drugs again. Why? Because deliverance from the spirit of drug addiction would be removed out of my life. But because I received the word of the Lord and did not Declare that I was, but declared that I was not a drug addict while I was still doing drugs. I meant what I said because I he meant what he told me, and I got the final result was total liberty from a demonic spirit in my life. Because we all know if you constantly using drugs and you can't stop when you want, there's a demon there. There's a demon of drug addiction there. You can release yourself from it, but you need the word of God. Why? You need a legal right to face the enemy face to face. Without a legal right to face the enemy face to face, he respects you nothing. He gives up no ground to you. You are nothing. That's why the weak Christians, weak Christians in this case, being Christians who talk a lot, but they don't read and they don't study and they don't worship God. We Christians, the enemy does not respect them. Why should he leave? If I was your adversary and I came to take over your house, I wouldn't leave neither. Because you ain't got the power. So I'm going to put you in bondage. And I'm going to torment you all the days of your life. Even if you know that Jesus is Lord, but don't know how to stand, I'm going to take advantage of your not knowing. Because God says where my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And if I'm your enemy, I already know that. I'm going to use that. I'm going to use the fact that you haven't read for six days. I'm going to use the fact that you don't remember nothing from Bible class. I'm going to use the fact that every time a preacher tell you to do homework, you don't do it. I'm going to use every opportunity of your negative choices to put you in bondage. But I say. Because the Holy Spirit is saying, strongholds must fall at the releasing of God's word.
When God's word is paid attention to, nothing can hold you in bondage. If you got your head depressed, if you down and you're moody and you're sick and all these things, these things need to be addressed as demons that gain access to men when men don't pay attention to God's word. We just came out of conversation, me, uh, Pastor Ahmed, and Deacon uh, uh, Kimra, we came out, and Sister Elsa, we came out of conversation, and the conversation, we was talking about certain things, and I went home, and I sat with God, and he showed me the conclusion of the matter. Pay attention. Pay attention to what I'm saying. Pay attention. Pay attention. Pay attention. Now, in order to pay attention, you have to have a heart that's willing to do what thus saith the Lord? You got to have an ear that hearkens unto God, not just hears God. Because you can hear music and not dance to it, but a ear that hearkens to music, you're going to dance to it every time. You're going to obey the beat. That was good right there. You can hear music and not bounce or bob your head to it because you just hear it. But you can hearken unto the music and obey the drum and begin to dance. God, in this case, is the music. I always say God has a sound. What is that sound? It's the sound His Word makes in your spirit, man. You have to take that sound Take that word of God placed in your spirit and echo that sound to the enemy by way of speaking God's word. Strongholds fall when God's word is received, believed, and spoken with faith being the motive. You don't got to go around behind the devils all day. That's an authority we have, but you don't got to necessarily do that all day. You can read God's word a certain amount of hours each week. And as you read, strongholds, if they are present, will fall. Demons, if they are present and you don't want to be connected with a demon, then God ain't going to make you be connected with a demon. His word is going to free you. You got to put the word inside you. Why? Where there is an empty house, whoever gets it first can occupy it. Where there is an empty section in the house, if you have a house and you have not claimed that section of the house, a devil will claim that. In this case, that house being you. For we are spirit beings possessing the soul, living in the body. Verse 22. Why must we keep them in 21 in the midst of our heart? For they are life. Let's say, for the word of God is life unto those that find them. If you are experiencing a deadness in your life, you must find the word of God, for the word of God is life. It is alive, for the sword of the Spirit is sharp and powerful, and any two-edged sword piercing even the dividing asunder, it goes through your, your, your skin, your, your bone, your marrow, it goes through your soul and reads. It identifies the true nature of your heart. And so when there's an issue in your life, put the word of God that deals with that issue in your heart and the word of God will deal with the issue because you paid attention to it. Now I'm going to say something very key. A lot of people are not delivered because you're not paying attention to God's word. You claim it on voodoo, voodoo. You claim it on this and you claim it on that. But I'm telling you, man's bondage is simply because he won't pay attention to God. Adam and Eve did not pay attention to God, and sin fell upon every man. He did not pay attention to God. What in the Word of God are you not paying attention to? 23. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Where do the issues of life come? Do they come from the devil? But you have Christians believing that their issues are coming from the devil. 
the issues are coming from the heart and he's capitalizing on your choice to believe in something. If you believe you're defeated, he doesn't have to fight you. All he has to do is keep you, keep you there. You put yourself there, all he got to do is keep you there. Keep thy heart with all, um, verse 22, for they are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. Why does the word of God say to all who find them? Know why? We're supposed to be searching the Bible every day. I'm just going to hit it just as plain as it is. You watch TV every day. You eat every day. You go to work every day. You sleep every day. You wash every day. I hope. Uh, <laughs> okay? You put on deodorant every day. Again, I hope. Uh, but you won't read the word every day. You know why? You're, 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 you're not paying attention. So I don't care how long it is. I'm not that preacher. I'm not telling you you got to spend five hours with God. I'm telling you you got to spend time in God's word, period. Fifteen minutes to an hour is better than nothing. Put it in your eyes and put it in your ears and bring it out your mouth. That is the defense and the offense of the battle, to put the word in your ears and the word in your eyes and bring it out of your mouth. That is the proper way to stand in the kingdom of God here on this earth. Verse 23, keep thy heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. Put away from thee a forward mouth and perverse lips put far from thee. I'm telling you another reason strongholds are present in a man is because his mouth is perverse. I can't do that. I'm tired. I'm sick. I'm broke. I'm this. I'm that. They ain't gonna accept me. They don't love me. I don't love myself. God don't love me. It is so many words that we possibly say in a day without verbalizing them that brings a curse upon your own self and paralyzes you. Sometimes you paralyze your own self with your own words and the adversary is just simply being an adversary and taking advantage of the territory you're giving. Sometimes the enemy's territory that he gets is gained because you gave it to him. You left him space. Where? In the place where he calls his house. Because if you're a Christian, you've been delivered from him. He's no longer the landlord. Jesus Christ is our Lord and our Savior. So how did he get space again? We gave it to him. So claim the space back in your mind. Claim it back in your heart. Claim it back in your body, in your life. Release yourself from the curse. Release yourself from the stronghold. I release myself from the lie that I'm tired. Are you kidding me? I've been enjoying doing that all week long. And sometimes, when you go to do it, it seems in the first time you do it that nothing happens. Keep doing it. Keep doing it for a little while. Keep saying it for a little while. No, I shall live and not die and declare the glory of the Lord. And depression is not a part of God's life. So you got to know what word to say in its season. The Holy Spirit told me just because you have the truth don't mean you have a right to speak the truth anytime you want to speak it. You have to be led. Those who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. Sometimes just simply sit down and say, Holy Spirit, how do I deal with this? How do I deal with this? Lord, it seems that I cannot do this on my own. So I confess the truth. Without you, I won't be able to do it. But with you, I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. Show me how to bring it down. Because many people looking for God to bring it down. But if God can show you a preventive measure, he can deliver you once and never have to do it again. Why? You will always know the preventive measure. This is the preventive measure and the way of deliverance, first of all. Verse 24, put away from thee a forward mouth and perverse lips and put far from thee and put far from thee. Let thy eyes look right on 
and let thy eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder the path of thy feet, and Lord, all thy ways be established. Meditation is a stronghold preventer. When you meditate, not on what God said alone, you can't stop there. When you meditate to do what thus saith the Lord, so shall your path be established. Illustration, how to use the word of God. All week long, I, I've been doing it throughout the years, but specifically with a very strong purpose in me. All week long, it is written, I am blessed. Father, because you said I am, I am. It is written, I'm blessed when I rise up, me and my whole house. We are blessed when we lay lie down, me and my whole house. I am blessed when I go out, me and my whole house. I am blessed when I come in, me and my whole house. I am blessed in the city and in the field, and whatsoever I put my hands to do, I shall prosper. And the Holy Spirit said, wait. He said, sometime that, that, that thing you do in the field, it's not with your hands. It's not always work. Work is not the breaker of the breach. Work don't destroy devils. Going to work for another man don't deliver a man's house from many troubles. It is the word of the Lord. He said in many cases it is nothing to do in your hand. When you're out there you got to have a word of God in your mouth. Speaking the word throughout the day. Speaking the word throughout the day. Ignoring feelings, ignoring voices, but in many cases, not just ignoring voices, because an ignored voice don't stop the voice. You gotta stop the voice, rebuke the devourer. Put away from thee a forward mouth and perverse lips put far from thee. Let thy eyes look right on and let thy eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder the path of thy feet, and let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand, nor to the left. Remove thy feet from evil. There no responsibility. We was, we was reading responsibility the whole time. It was God's responsibility to give it. So he said, my son attend to my word. Everything after that deals with our responsibility. Being an obedient, responsible son or woman of God will keep strongholds from ever being built. Why? God's word is the truth. He has no reason to put you in bondage. He even allowed us to have the choice whether we would receive Christ as Lord and Savior or not. He, he gave us the choice to live or to burn. That's a powerful God. Sometime it baffled me growing up in Christianity. Why would you even give us a choice? Why don't you just make us Christians and save us and stop playing around? And one day he said to me, I didn't desire a lot of people. He said, I, I desired a man. He said, you made the choice to sin. I'm giving you the option to make the choice to be delivered. Your forefather made the choice to sin. And now I'm giving you the opportunity to choose freedom. That's a good parent that teaches the child the right thing to do and then says, I'm not going to stress. I taught you now. Go make your decision because you have the truth. So if you make the wrong decision, there's something wrong in your heart and that we have to deal with. But you have to make the decision in order for me to know what we need to deal with. We can't see in the dark. But the Lord sees all things, for to him there is no darkness, mm -hmm. there is only light. Right. And so we must go to light and pay attention to what light has to say in order for light to come in us and then shine from within us outwardly to the world. And so I say again, strongholds must fall and I mean it, for at the preaching of the truth, when it is received, faith come to be delivered. And I'll say that we are the heads and not the tails, and that we are above and not beneath. I'll say depression and anger is not our lot. 
I say that we are released from the curse of the Lord, spiritual death, poverty, sickness, and disease. Amen. I say we are the redeemed of the Lord, Amen. redeemed by the hand of the Lord from the hand of the enemy. And so we say so. Somebody say, I am the redeemed. I am the redeemed. And with that truth, the stronghold, stronghold of the mind, of the mind must, fall. must fall. Let's look at something and we're going to close. I love what God did tonight. I had, I, I had these scriptures for a month already, already planned out. And God took one and he just ran with it. I didn't know I had all that information inside of me. And you usually won't know when the battle starts. But if you constantly read and put your mind on the word, you will always be prepared for the enemy, whether you remember it in your conscious mind or not. Sometimes I say, Father, what I just read, bring to the forefront of my mind so that I could understand what I just read or what thus saith the Lord. Look at right here, I want you to become non-dependent upon yourself for deliverance. Because if there's an ounce of you thinking that it's on your strength, you're going to be dealing with this thing for years and years and years. There are things I was dealing with and still dealing with because I thought if I made a certain move, it would go away. I was wrong. Look at Amos. The book of Amos, chapter 2. Amos chapter 2, we're going to pick it up at verse 14. I'll we'll pick it up at 13 of 12 so you can get a little idea what's going on. But he, he gave the Nazarites wine to drink and commanded the prophets, saying, Prophesy now. Behold, I'm pressed under you, as a cart is pressed that is full of sheaves. Therefore, the flight shall perish from the swift. The fast won't be able to get away. And the strong shall not strengthen his force. Neither shall the mighty deliver himself. The most strongest man in physical things cannot deliver himself when the enemy comes to get him. And so, is it safe to say that when God comes to get you, there ain't nobody, including the devil, who can save you? Verse 15, neither shall he stand that handles the bow, the best of the best hunters, will not be able to deliver himself. And he that is swift of foot shall not deliver himself. Neither shall he that rides the horse deliver himself. Horses are fast. If you ever seen the horse derby, when that bell or that gun go off, those horses be flying faster than cars. You see, when you mention a car, the horsepower of a car, they're literally referring to the horsepower of a horse. They're saying, this is where we got this idea from. This is where... We put this thing to work at. We took from this vision and put it over here. The, the power of a horse, how it moves, how it takes off, how it slows down, and put that idea in an engine. And now we got horsepower. God is saying, all the horsepower in your world won't be able to save you. Verse 16, and he that is courageous among the mighty shall flee away Naked in that day, saith the Lord. Without God, you can't resist the enemy. Mm -hmm. Amen. And refusing God eventually is going to bring God upon you. Where can you go and where can you hide? Mm -hmm. There is no stronghold that can hide from the Lord. 
For greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. I'll say it again. For greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. What are you hearing? You're hearing a week's worth of work. You're hearing what I had to do in order to smile and stand upright without pressure. Is it all good? I don't know what that means to you, but all I know, me and my house, all is well with me and my house. Can you declare that and decree that for yourself, understanding God and knowing his word? That God will never lie. That God will never leave you nor forsake you. I don't care what stronghold it is. I don't care what devil it is in your life. You begin to call on the name of Jesus and you watch the living word come and break the chains. And so my prayer for the viewer and even us here is that we would call on the name of the Lord and obey his voice and read his word and study to show ourselves approved in the eyes of the Lord that we be not put ashamed in battle, but rightly divide in the word of truth. And you watch God break the chains and break the breach and deliver you out of many troubles. Don't forget to go to our website, www.familyworship.com. We love you. This is a part of the reason why we do this. We do this because we love God and we were instructed. But we also do this because we love you and we understand that the enemy is ripping and raging out there, walking back and forth, to and fro, seeking whom he may devour. When you get this word in your hand, put it in your hand and then pass it to another. Don't just sit selfishly after you get delivered. Give the word of God, which is all the delivery power of one needs, and give it to somebody else. Stop being selfish. When you get free, it's so that you can go and free somebody else. In Jesus' mighty name. This is Minister Lawson, Breaking the Chains um, School of Worship, School of Ministry. I love you. Be blessed. In Jesus' mighty name. Come on and put your hands together. Hallelujah.